Sometimes every once in a while you'll see in the news or uh, even a, a scientist in the field will say that we uh, live in a hologram. I want to break down what that means and why that's a pretty disingenuous statement uh, and how it relates to the exploration that I'm doing now, which is a discussion on string theory. So it goes, it goes back to black holes because everything always goes back to black holes. And the question of what happens to information when it falls into a black hole. So if you throw, and the thing is, like, no matter what you throw into a black hole, you can throw a book, you can throw a cat, you can throw in your least favorite person, doesn't matter what you throw into a black hole. From the outside, a black hole just looks black. It has mass, charge, and spin. If you throw a book into one black hole and then a cat into another black hole and they have the exact same mass, you can't tell them apart. Like you close your eyes and switch them, you can't tell the two black holes apart. That's no big deal. We just assume, I guess, that the information gets locked up behind the event horizon and we never see it again. The information isn't destroyed, it's just really well hidden. And that's no big deal unless you're Stephen Hawking and you discover Hawking radiation. Now, Hawking radiation says that black holes do radiate. They do give off a little bit of heat. Very, very low, very, very slow. But it's not zero. But the radiation they give off is is essentially random. There's no information in it. And as the black holes radiate, they get smaller and smaller and smaller, and then they go away. Now, Hawking radiation is not a proven idea. It's a hypothetical idea based on some very difficult mathematics in a regime that we don't fully understand. We'll take it as a given for now for the rest of the discussion, but I just want you to keep that in mind. This poses a challenge because you throw a cat into one black hole and a book into another black hole. And from the outside and from the Hawking radiation, you can't tell the difference, which is the, which is the cat black hole and which is the book black hole. And then they go away. What happened to the information? What happened to the information that you threw a cat into one and a book into another? This is something called the black hole information paradox. And a potential clue added to a resolution of this paradox was found when we realized That when something goes into the black hole, of course the black hole gets bigger. Its volume gets bigger and its surface area gets bigger. But when you throw something into a black hole, the surface area grows proportionally to what you threw in, not the volume. So if you throw one bit of information into a black hole, you don't get one unit volume in a added to the black hole, you get one unit surface area added to the black hole. The surface area grows in proportion to the information thrown in. This is something interesting. This tells us that maybe, maybe what black holes really care about is their surfaces and not their volumes. That maybe somehow the information of a black hole or that's of the information that's thrown into a black hole is contained on the surface and not within the volume. And maybe everything you need to know about a black hole is contained on the surface and not on the volume. Black holes are three-dimensional objects for sure, but it appears maybe that they can be completely described by their two-dimensional surfaces. And when you can, and this is very general, if you have a high-dimensional thing, whatever the thing is, and you can completely and totally describe it using a fewer number of dimensions, you have a hologram. This is a mathematical word. It's a jargon word. That's what it means, hologram. It could be that black holes are described best using holographic techniques because it could be that all the information is pasted on the surface, everything you need to reconstruct everything about the black hole. And since black holes are objects of pure gravity, this is perhaps an interesting route into our understanding of gravity. And so some people have been playing with this both in the context of string theory and outside of string theory. 
where they say, okay, we've got our universe. There's a lot of gravity. It's three dimensional. We have a hard time understanding gravity. Maybe we can apply our holographic techniques and understand everything on the boundary of our universe and use that to understand what's happening inside of our universe when it comes to gravity. And then this is where people go off the rails and say we live in a holographic universe. We are a hologram. At best, it's a mathematical technique, a trick to understand something that doesn't always elevate it to the realm of, you know, physical reality. We use math tricks all the time that do not correspond to physical reality, but they're shortcuts that allow us to get the job done. Doesn't mean they're actually, you know, real. So just keep that in mind. And I know I didn't talk about string theory much, but I wanted to set up this whole holographic idea. And then next week, I'm going to talk about how this holographic idea is actually applied to string theory. So tune in next week and stay a hologram. I don't really have a good way to end this. Anyway, go to Patreon. You know what to do.